All right. And now we are on to day two of the 100 day challenge. And for this, I thought I'd pick um, the second book of the Balgariad series, uh, Queen of Sorcery by David Eddings. God, I haven't opened this book in forever. I, used to, I, I read this in high school. I still got the book. Yeah. Should probably uh, put it somewhere. Okay, and go. Page 149. Uh, chapter is Tonedra or something, <clears throat> I guess. So, we're from Martyrin, the man answered. Brother Obor couldn't stand the ghosts anymore, so I was given permission to bring him home until his sanity returned. He knelt over the fallen man. He didn't have to hit him so hard, he accused. I didn't, Garion protested. I only touched him. I think he fainted. He must have hidden, the monk said. Look at the mark on his face. An ugly red welt stood... An ugly... An ugly red welt. Why was I going to say welt? This is not the German. We do not pronounce the W as a V. It's not... It's not the... It's not the right way to do English. No. <laughs> An ugly red welt stood on the unconscious man's forehead. Garion, Aunt Paul said, can you do exactly what I tell you to do without as asking any questions? Garion nodded. I think so. Get off your horse, go to the man on the ground, and put the palm of your hand on his forehead. Then apologize to him for knocking him down. Are you sure it's safe, Polgara? Barak asked. It'll be all right. Do as I told you, Garion. Garion hesitantly, Garion hesitantly, 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 Garion hesitantly approached the stricken man, reached out, and laid his palm on the ugly welt. I'm sorry, he said, and I hope you get well soon. There was a surge in his arm again, but quite different from the first one. The madman's eyes cleared, and he blinked. Where am I? he asked. What happened? His voice sounded very normal and the welt on his forehead was gone. It's all right now, Garion told him, not knowing exactly why he said it. You've been sick, but you're better now. Come along, Garion, Aunt Paul said. His friend can take care of him now. His friend can care for him now. There's no taken there. That's, ah, uh, that's why I'm terrible at narration. I just insert words here and there, you know. You know, just for the fun of it. Hey, why don't we put a take in here? Why don't why don't we put a just in here? Why don't we why don't we why don't we put a flub of florium? Why don't we put flubberforium here? That's not a real word I use. It's it's just something that happens occasionally. <clears throat> Lost track of where I am. Okay. His friend can care for him now. Garion went back to his horse, his thoughts churning. A miracle, the second monk exclaimed. Hardly that, Aunt Paul said. The blow restored your friend's mind, that's all. It happens sometimes. But she, but she and Mr. Wolf exchanged a long glance that said something... Oh, whoops. But she and Mr. Wolf exchanged a long glance that said quite plainly that something else had happened. Something unexpected. They rode on, leaving the two monks in the middle of the street. They rode on, leaving the two monks in the middle of the street. That's also another sequence of words I hate. Uh, of the, of the, of the street, of the street. And that's very prevalent in novels everywhere, so I need to get used to saying that. <clears throat> anyway, that was the first time true, but uh, for entertainment, let's try it again, only this time try to rein in, rein in the mistakes. <clears throat> Don't screw up, 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 don't screw up. Where from Martyrin, the man answered. Brother Abor couldn't stand the ghosts anymore, so I was given permission to bring him home until his sanity returned. He knelt over the fallen man. He didn't have to hit him so hard, he accused. I didn't, Garion protested. I only touched him. I think he fainted. You must have hit him, the monk said. Look at the mark on his face. An ugly red welt stood on the unconscious man's forehead. Garion, Aunt Paul said, can you do exactly what I tell you to do without asking any questions? Gary nodded. I think so. Get down off your horse. Go to the man on the ground 
and put the palm of your hand on his forehead, then apologize to him for knocking him down. Are you sure it's safe, Bulgara? Barak asked. It will be all right. Do as I told you, Garion. Garion hesitantly, her uh, God. <clears throat> Garion hesitantly approached the stricken man, reached out, and laid his palm on the ugly welt. I'm sorry, he said, and I hope you get well soon. There was a surge in his arm again, but quite different from the first one. The madman's eyes cleared, and he blinked. Where am I? he asked. What happened? His voice sounded very normal, and the welt on his forehead was gone. It's all right now, Garion told him, not knowing exactly why he said it. You've been sick, and you're better now. <clears throat> Come along, Garion, Aunt Paul said. His friend can care for him now. Garion went back to his horse, his thoughts churning. A miracle, the second monk. The second mock, mock, ah! Uh, the second mock exclaimed, "Mock, mock! God, that's that's a mock, mock, mock! Uh. <laughs> a miracle!" The second mock exclaimed. Hardly that, Aunt Paul said. The blow restored your friend's mind. That's all. It happens sometimes. <laughs> But she and Mr. Wolf exchanged a long glance that said quite plainly that something else had happened. Something unexpected. They rode on, leaving the two monks in the middle of the street. <clears throat> yeah, it's around the... Yeah. Not sure if you guys have read the Bulgarian series or not, but uh, I just think it's interesting that um, Garion still refers to Polgaris on Paul and uh, uh, Balgareth as uh, Mr. Wolf. <laughs> That's uh, still very early in the series in that case. Anyway, that was book two, um, day two uh, of uh, the 100 Day Narration Challenge. Uh, and this was book two of the Bulgarian series, Queen of Sorcery by David Eddings. Thanks for having me here.